This is the Art Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the Amazon best-selling book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. In the Marketing Minute, we answer your questions to help your art career. Brought to you by artmarketing.com, the place to go to learn more about marketing. Now, here's your host, art magazine publisher, Eric Rhodes. Thank you, Jim Kipping, and thank you for joining us today. I am here, my goal is to eliminate the idea of the starving artist. So let's get right to today's questions. Okay, here is a question from Kevin Palmieri in Dover, Delaware, who asks, what are your top don'ts for selling art? Well, Kevin, I don't like to thrive on negatives. I don't, I, you know, I never really thought about that, but let me see if I could come up with a couple. Um, I think a lot of us suffer from what's called imposter syndrome. So don't get imposter syndrome that imposter syndrome is when you don't feel worthy i went through that my first time at a gallery it was in this gallery in santa fe and the first time i was there i was like why why are they putting me in the gallery i mean i I don't really deserve this i took my paintings i was really nervous we hung them up and we yeah i just was nervous totally nervous i didn't feel deserving and you got to get past that so don't have imposter syndrome you got to overcome these kind of things in your head uh, I think an, another thing, uh, just just a personal thing, don't paint too small. You know, uh, the painters back east, the plein air painters back east paint bigger than the plein air painters um, on the other side of the country. I don't know why it is. It probably has to do with Redfield or one of those artists. But, you know, they use these great big take it easel, ease, uh, easels, these great big, you know, do 30 by 40s on location, and they'll do them in about the same amount of time. And uh, one painter back east said, you know, I don't know how these painters make any money, you know, because, you know, selling all these 9 by 12 paintings, when you sell 30 by 40, you know, for a couple hours of work, you make some really big money. So I don't know. I think that's just something to consider. Um, Don't have mindset issues. Mindset is the big killer of everything. You know, it's not just imposter syndrome, but it's, you know, telling yourself that you're not worth the money. Um, And that kind of goes to pricing. Don't underprice. Artists tend to um, kind of be a little shy. Well, I wouldn't pay that much money for it, so why would somebody else? You got to keep yourself um, in perspective. You know, somebody who can, I have friends who could walk into an art gallery and drop $250,000 and it would hurt them about as much as if we pulled a 20 out of our wallet. And so there are people out there that think differently than you. And if they see something uh, and, and it's underpriced, um, it has a negative impact. So let me give you an example. Um, I had, I was doing my art marketing boot camp at the convention one year, this guy raised his hand and he said, listen, I got a story for you. He says, I was at an art show. A woman walked in. She said, I love that painting. How much is it? And he said, it's $4,000. She said, I'll take it. She writes him a check, hands him the check for $40,000. And he said, oh, ma'am, uh, you added one too many zeros. It's not $40,000. It's $4,000. And she said, Oh, it must not be very good. And she ripped up the check. True story. You see price is equal to value in some people's minds. You know, if somebody is affluent, super affluent, they don't want a $4,000 painting. They want a $40,000 painting. You would think, you know, wow, it's a great painting. I can get it for four instead of 40. That would be the mindset. That's not how some people think. So just, I'm not saying you should price your stuff. You, you've got to work with your gallery owner if you've got one and work with them on pricing. And they're going to tell you, here's uh, the price I want to get. And then we're going to establish your pricing. We're going to get it higher and higher and higher over time. And listen to them. They know what they're doing typically. But, uh, I, you know, other than other than that, I don't know what, what not to do. Um, I You know, read my book. My book will probably tell you all the things to do. And that's where we want to focus our attention is the the, the uh, positives. Our next question comes from Joshua Moran in Santa Fe, New Mexico, who asked, what's the best, what's best to include in my bio, my biography? And what should I leave out? Well, I, boy, um, biography, what, first off, what's the purpose of a biography? You got to ask yourself that. Why have a biography? Well, the biography is to set the tone about the artist. Now, I don't ever recommend lying to anybody. Lying is not fruitful. It's going to catch up to you. But I I do think what you can do is you can create a sense of of brand or something that 
feels exotic. You know, people who buy art oftentimes are living vicariously through people like us. You know, I, you and I both know artists who do some pretty crazy things. They climb mountains and they, they go, to, they fly in places in helicopters and they, you know, they, they adventure in on mule pack trips and things like that. That stuff is what sells. And so if you're boring and you don't have any of that stuff, then just be boring. But if you have any of that stuff, you know, I don't, I don't know if anybody really cares much about anything but your painting career. You know, you could say, you know, Eric is a, um, you know, Eric is a former heart surgeon uh, who uh, was, you know, did heart surgery for 30 years, but his big passion was learning to paint and he learned to paint and he went out plein air painting. And now he does, you know, helicopter trips into the high Sierras and tries to capture places that, no one gets to go in person. Uh, you know, stuff like that is what really matters. And the other thing that people want, especially galleries, is they want things that show um, what I call social proof. Social proof is uh, something that says that you're good, right? So social proof might be uh, that you won the plein air salon uh, landscape category uh, in uh, March of uh, 2020. 21. Uh, and uh, they w- might want to say you were featured in a magazine article or you were featured in a book or you uh, won this award or that award, a blue ribbon at this event, etc. List all that stuff because that gives you credibility. It's social proof. And social proof says the reason you want it is because people want to know that they're buying somebody who's good. And uh, because people are insecure about paintings. And even though this is not necessarily quote unquote investment, uh, because some people think that way. Most people don't. Um, they, you know, they are asking themselves, is this person any good? You know, I'm writing a check for $4,000 or 2000 or 500 or whatever the number is. It's all relative to different people. So just make sure that you're doing things that create social proof credibility. If you have <clears throat> quotes from famous people, uh, you know, who are collectors or famous uh, curators or something, put those in there. You know, Jean Stern, the former uh, director of the Irvine Museum says this about you, and that kind of thing can be golden. Well, this has been the Art Marketing Minute with me, Eric Rhodes. My goal in life is to eliminate the idea of the starving artist and to help your dreams actually come true. So if you want to submit questions, simply email eric at artmarketing.com. And to learn more about marketing ideas, you can visit artmarketing.com. Thanks for listening.